Well, you know, I, I've been saying this all afternoon. It's too early to tell yet whether this storm is going to directly affect us. But let me get into explaining why we have a problem here. Now, the hurricane warning, as uh, George and Margaret pointed out, runs from the Vermilion Bay all the way across the mouth of the river to Pascagoula. That is obviously in cover or just all of southeast Louisiana under a hurricane warning now, despite the fact that the storm is still almost uh, 450 miles from us. Why do they have to warn us so early? Well, it's because it's uh, such a massive population that we have to evacuate from the mouth of the river all the way through Lower Plaquemines, up from the parishes down to our south, and they all have to get out through us and out to the east, west, or north. So they have to give us such a, a vast lead time that they just uh, overwarn is what I'm trying to say, and I'm afraid that's what's happened here. They would love to wait till, say, tomorrow afternoon or evening to put out the warnings, but they can't do that. They have to issue them far in advance. So even though this track, look at it, if it takes this track, as George pointed out, this is almost a direct hit, and it would cause major problems just like it did in Miami here in southeast Louisiana. And it appears, look at the, with the timetable on this, it comes ashore, as usual, right around midnight. They always wait until after dark. Don't know why, it just seems to be that way. Here it is, last night came across Miami overnight, and it's, it's out into the Gulf of Mexico now. What I want you to notice, though, as it moved across Florida, it lost its eye wall, but look what's happened to it now. Whoa, it has an eye wall all the way around it again. This is quite a storm, and if you watch the motion here, you'll see that it's starting to jog just a little bit towards the north. Not much yet. I'm just keeping my fingers crossed that it stays more west before it turns towards the north and maybe avoids us. Hate to say it would affect western Louisiana, but we're trying to keep it away from us. Right now, though, it doesn't look very good. If you could go to visit someone, I'd do so tonight. And we'll, of course, have all the coordinates and a lot more on Andrew when we come back in a few minutes. Okay, Bob. Well, the worst is over for the people of South Florida. Their wake-up call from Andrew came in about four this morning. Here is more on the damage he left behind from reporter Wayne Dolcefino. Miami Beach, 4 a.m. In the darkness of this tourist ghost town, incredible wind, danger flying through the air. Our first attempt to venture out lasts just minutes when a large piece of wood smashes into our car. Already there's damage in Miami's South Beach. So a lot of wood, a lot of damage been bad. Dawn reveals just how bad. A 40-year-old hotel ravaged, down power lines, broken windows, trees everywhere, wandering the streets, an old woman. Where could I get a cup of coffee? I don't know, you live around here? But it pales to the devastation farther south. The road to the Keys, a literal minefield. The damage to buildings, extraordinary. A U-Haul truck upside down on the roof. Oh, God. I stayed in the closet. It was really... Oh, it was something else. In Pine, Florida, Margie Grandison stands in front of her neighborhood shopping center, now in ruins. The looters are already at work. It's horrible. It's really hard when the people are so depressed and they're in trouble. They really are in trouble. I'm Wayne Dolcefino, reporting from Miami. President Bush is promising federal aid to help Florida cope with the damage. He's cut a campaign trip in the Northeast short, and he's on his way to Florida this evening. City leaders are asking people in New Orleans to flee from Hurricane Andrew. A mandatory evacuation has been issued for certain parts of New Orleans, not for the entire city. Right now, Mayor Sidney Bartholomew is speaking at City Hall. Robin Cohen is there with more. Robin? Well, Margaret, uh, the mayor has just started a briefing, and I don't want to interrupt him, so why don't we just go ahead and listen to what he's saying. will be uh, addressed by the Citizens Action Center. The, the telephone number is 565-7115. Uh, five six five seven one one five and uh, with that uh, we again are encouraging all uh, businesses uh, that do not have to be open tomorrow to, to close uh, we're uh, closing City Hall tomorrow and all of uh, city personnel will be on an emergency uh, standby. Mr. Mayor, uh, if we get a, a direct hit, you know, if the hurricane moves up the river, is there any plan for vertical evacuation? Uh, we do not have a plan of vertical evacuation. Uh, basically, we're monitoring the uh, area and the hurricane as closely as possible, and in the event that we feel it will hit uh, the city of New Orleans directly, we will encourage uh, evacuation outside of the city. Uh, of course, 
uh, there may be people who can't get out, and uh, we would encourage them to get to higher ground, uh, either in a hotel or whatever. Mr. Mayor, you are encouraging everyone to leave as soon as possible. Well, we're encouraging voluntary evacuations. Uh, that is, uh, if you can leave at this time, we encourage you to leave. What about uh, the state police uh, have said that the interstate, uh, they fear a pileup because it's down to one lane past uh, Laplace, there's construction going on. Any words of advice in regards to that? No, we have been in touch with the uh, uh, Adjutant General of the National Guard and they are available to help and assist in controlling traffic as well as the state police. So again, that, that means it's important for us to encourage people who can leave to leave so that uh, the build-up uh, does not happen uh, in the city. Uh, we're in touch with Jefferson Parish and other parish officials also who are, are coordinating their efforts and encouraging evacuations of certain areas of, of their parishes. Yeah. Okay, there you have uh, Mayor Bartholomew. He uh, is uh, in some cases not asking but ordering folks to leave the city. I just want to go over those mandatory evacuation areas uh, right now. Uh, he's ordering all low-lying areas of Orleans Parish residents to evacuate. That means lower Algiers, low-lying areas in New Orleans East, and also some isolated areas not protected by the levee system. That means places like Lake Catherine. As far as everyone else is concerned, the mayor is, is advising residents to take the safe approach and leave the city as soon as possible. As I mentioned, state police are advising that when you take I-10 West, you exit at 55 North because there is construction going on right after Laplace. Back to you in the studio. I'll have more with the mayor coming up live at 6. All right, that's Robin Cohen reporting live from City Hall. Folks in Grand Isle are not taking any chances tonight. Officials there have ordered people to evacuate their homes immediately. Our mobile newsroom is in Grand Isle this evening for a live update on the evacuation. Let's go to News 8's John Sherman. John, the folks down there are pretty accustomed to this type of thing. I imagine it went smoothly. Margaret, I have to tell you, though, even so, it is a very eerie feeling to be here on the beaches of Grand Isle, primarily because, as you can see, it is a beautiful day. The skies are blue, the sun is shining, the wind has picked up a bit in the Gulf. You can see the white caps in the distance. I say eerie primarily because this island is virtually vacant. Uh, I just talked to Mayor Andy Balance, who told me about 70% of the island's 1,500 residents have evacuated the area tonight. News A's Joe Jordina has more on the run for higher ground. In the Lafouche parishes, homeowners boarded up windows and took other precautions to protect their property. There were traffic tie-ups as the evacuation out of the low-lying areas picked up with news Andrew could talk at Louisiana. Boat owners from pleasure craft, shrimp boats, and crew boats all evacuated. Can Oil companies utilized helicopters to remove workers off the rigs out in the Gulf. There's been a very inviting scene here in Grand Isle as the waves continue to crash the shoreline. But there's no one on the beaches enjoying this great setting. That's because they're busy evacuating. In the worst scenario is uh, crowded streets, bad weather conditions, and darkness. And that's why Grand Isle always evacuates a little earlier than most people. Preston Collins of Collins Grocery Store plans to evacuate, but will stay open as long as possible. I mainly protect my store, and I'm, I'm really doing a service to people who's evacuating, but anything overnight, I'm going up. The Williams family spent the morning getting out their belongings. They left knowing this is no place to weather out Hurricane Andrew. Just came over here to board up and get ready in case we do get hit by Andrew, but uh, as far as we know, um, that's about all we can do. <laughs> South Louisiana has seen a share of hurricanes, and even though locks and levee systems have been improved in recent years, the best way to survive one of these killer storms is to evacuate. From Grand Isle, Joe Jardine, WVUE News 8. Now, one concern here is that even if uh, Andrew does not hit Grand Isle directly, there is always an erosion concern here at Grand Isle. Now, this will be a perfect testing uh, storm. You see the rock jetties out there on the beaches of Grand Isle. These have been built since the last hurricane, since, in fact, the last tropical storm hit this area. So uh, these jetties will be watched very closely to see if, in fact, they can keep the sand on the beaches rather than washing it out to shore. Reporting live from Grand Isle, I'm John Sherman, WVUE News 8. All right, John. It is a beautiful day out there. Hard to believe there's anything menacing out yeah, there. Yeah, that's true, but the tiger does bite. Mm -hmm. Here in the city, more than 250 employees at the Orleans Levee Board are working overtime tonight, bracing for Andrew's blow. And as I found out, filling sandbags is one of the top orders of the day. This area you are, we'll get in touch with my name. 
The keepers of the area's levees and floodgates are working feverishly tonight, bracing for what could be the biggest test of the city's improved flood protection system since Hurricane Betsy. I have a list of gates you can go ahead and get closed. In Orleans Parish, 111 floodgates like this one are being shut tight, a first line of defense against the floodwaters to come. A lot of the area in Ninth Ward affected by Betsy down by the uh, Coast Guard station has since had flood walls constructed. So now instead of having to sandbag the whole wharf area, all we have to do is close about three or four gates, and that problem is basically solved. Workers filled thousands of sandbags today. 20,000 will be used to plug any holes Andy tears in our levee protection system. 2,000 are available for the public, and that is on a first come, first serve basis, and they have to pick them up. At midday, scores of motorists had already lined up, taking as many sandbags as their vehicle would hold. In East and West Jefferson, levee district officials spent the day working to close troublesome gaps in the levee protection system. District Vice President George Mall says sandbags may eventually be needed near the Williams Boulevard boat launch, the Causeway, Old Hammond Highway at the 17th Street Canal, and Veterans Boulevard at the 17th Street Canal, Airline Highway, and perhaps even the I-10. In West Jefferson, levee district officials say sandbagging will be completed tonight along a small section of Barataria Boulevard. Now again, sandbags are available on a first-come, first-served basis in Orleans Parish. You can get them at 6920 Franklin Avenue, but I'll warn you, the line is very long. We've also received word that people who live in Slidell can get sandbags at four locations there. Those four locations are 3rd Street, Sergeant Alfred at Cleveland, Independence at Rue Rochelle, John Slidell Park, and Pontchartrain Drive at Lee Street. Well, we have a lot more to tell you about, especially hurricane preparation, so stay with us. Be right back. For low interest loans to buy or renovate your home, call the New Orleans Home Mortgage Authority at 582-2298. It's the one call that could truly change your life. Let's take a closer look. There might be something in your pain reliever you may not want. Caffeine. Relax. There's a pain reliever that's caffeine-free. Genuine Bayer. 100% pure Bayer aspirin. America's number one aspirin. For those who use Equitrin for the relief of the minor aches and pains of arthritis, we've got a flash. You can wait hours for Equitrin to start working. Or with Genuine Bayer, you can wait just minutes. Genuine Bayer aspirin. America's number one aspirin. Sure, these frozen yogurts appeal to my healthy side, but I'm looking for pure taste. Briars first. Ripe strawberries. Mmm, so refreshing. I forget I'm eating healthy. My taste buds are crying out. Yes! Yes! No! No! All natural Briars frozen yogurt. So real, you can taste it. It's Chevy Rock Solid Value Days. Now get low 2.9% GMAC financing on Chevy CK Pickup. Rank the best full-size pickup by J.D. Power & Associates' initial quality study. At 2.9%, you'll save nearly $3,000 in finance charges on a new Chevy CK. Only during Rock Solid Value Days. The trucks you can depend on. The trucks that last. See your super Chevy dealers and get 2.9% financing on Chevy's full-size pickup. Attention, please. Flight 739 has been canceled. Attention, flight 739 has... Your flight was canceled? No problem. I can reschedule you. And I got you an aisle seat. Looks like you'll make that meeting after all. There are two kinds of travelers in the world. Those who deal with the madness, and those who don't have to. Uniglow, we will change the way you travel. The threat of Hurricane Andrew has all of us, of course, bracing for the worst. And people in areas like St. Bernard Parish are taking it very seriously. News 8's Karen Boudry spent the day in St. Bernard and is here with what's happening there. Karen, I guess everybody's kind of getting ready. They sure are. The neighborhoods, though, were pretty quiet earlier today. And that's because most of the people who weren't working were flocking to grocery stores and hardware stores, stocking up on all those things that are so essential during a hurricane. <laughs> There was certainly no calm before the storm in many St. Bernard stores today. It was a mad dash for hurricane supplies. But I've been through Betsy. I know what it's like. And people who know are coming early trying to get a jump on to see them when people get off of work. 
you're not going to get in these stores. Water, bread, things like pork and beans, uh, red beans in a can, anything that can be saved and just warmed like over a, even over a barbecue pit if you have one, because when you have no electricity, a lot of people don't realize with electric stoves you have nothing. While many of the shelves at this Chalmette grocery store were empty, priority reinforcements are on the way, because people here know how vulnerable this area is. In addition to non-perishable food and water, people are stocking up on batteries, flashlights, medicine, first aid kits, and tape and plywood to protect their homes. Pretty nervous. I uh, haven't really taken any preparations probably till tomorrow and see if it's coming this way or not. This is the kind of stuff that can easily become flying debris during a storm that a lot of people will tell you can be very damaging to a home. So it's a good idea to store this kind of stuff and tie down anything else that's loose outside your home. It's a routine many adults are familiar with, but not many children. It's kind of weird that some kids are real happy that um, Hurricane Andrew's coming, because it could kill them. And that's exactly why everyone is being urged to take precautions, just in case. Now, if you haven't had a chance to get out and get all those essentials, a lot of stores are going to stay open late tonight, mm -hmm. so you can get those after work. Okay, like we that. do have one announcement we want to make. This just handed to us at News 8. The New Orleans International Airport, sometime after 12 noon tomorrow, is going to be closed. So we want to pass that information on to you. And we'll have more on that as it occurs. There are a lot of school closures we need to tell you about. All the Jefferson Parish schools will be closed tomorrow until further notice. Same goes for public schools in St. Bernard Parish, Assumption Parish, St. John and St. Tammany Parish. Also, all New Orleans Archdiocese schools are closed, and so is the University of New Orleans, Xavier Delgado, LSU, and Southern. And we will update those again for you at 6. Sure will. We also want to update you now on some evacuation shelters open in the area. There aren't any open in Orleans Parish yet, but in Metairie, Red Cross shelters have been set up. They're at Archbishop Rummel High, East Jeff High, St. Angela's School, Harris Junior High, and Riverdale High. In St. Bernard Parish, the St. Bernard High School and Chalmette High have been set up as evacuation centers there. And, of course, we'll continue to update you on this information as more becomes available. Margaret? And, of course, Bob will be along in a little while with uh, more on Hurricane Andrew. But just ahead, some other news. Is memory loss a natural part of aging? Or can we do something about it? The answer is in our Health Watch report when we come back. The News 8 Senior Report is brought to you by Davison Mobility Sales. Are you having difficulty getting around like you used to? then you need to test drive the new Shuttle Transport. Its powerful electric motor takes you up to 20 miles on one charge. Maneuverability is excellent, and the comfortable seat swivels for your convenience. Test drive the new Shuttle Transport. Independence at your fingertips. For more information, call Davison Mobility Sales today. 367-7068. 367-7068. Davison Mobility Sales. This sale's too big for one man to handle. I need help! The Skull Guys! <laughs> your local Southern Quality Ford dealer's clearance sale is your best chance to save. The 93s are here, so the 92s have got to go. At just $179 a month loaded, these Escort LXs are going to move. Save big on F-150. Accept this personal invitation. Hurry and get the best deals of the year right now. Garden of Memories wants to remind you about a very basic responsibility. No matter what your age, sometimes the issues aren't clear. The answers aren't apparent. When it's important to understand, remember to do what you learned as a child. Garden of Memories urges you to ask questions and be informed as we celebrate America. Take a good look at your Lincoln Mercury dealer's summer saving storm. The storm hits big with $2,000 cash back on Lincoln Town Car. Featuring standard dual airbags and anti-lock brakes. Make your best deal and save even more. It picks up more power with big cash on Grand Marquis from your local dealer. Plus, Lincoln Mercury adds in up to $2,400 on this safety leader with available dual airbags and anti-lock brakes. So hurry and take a good look at huge savings on Town Car and Grand Marquis before the storm passes you by. Just about every one of us will suffer some memory loss as we get older. Up until now, it's been considered a natural part of the aging process. We say up until now because, as Health Watch reporter Lori Kilgore tells us, some researchers now feel memory loss may be a treatable condition. In this test, 
you will see a series of digits appear on the screen. Lydia Linkletter takes a memory test seven, like this one once 80, a month. She's taking part in a study seven, of several new medications that researchers hope will target certain four, areas of the brain 20, and enhance memory. In some cases, they may actually increase the key chemicals that are essential for memory. In other cases, they may improve the way in which messages are being carried in the brain. Dr. Mandos won't identify the drugs being tested because they haven't proved completely safe yet, but he calls preliminary results cautiously encouraging. The drug does make you feel um, more confident, more relaxed. Lydia's memory lapses are minor, as they are for most of us. Dr. Mendels hopes that drugs can do a far more difficult job, slow down the effects of Alzheimer's disease. I think that within the next five years, there will be prescription drugs that will probably be helpful for people with Alzheimer's disease. And I think that there's a good chance within the next decade, there will be additional drugs that will make a really big difference. Lydia's husband, George, suffered memory loss after an illness, and he's now in the program, too. The important thing Dr. Mendel says is to not give up. While the research treatments are no guarantee of anything, they're worth trying because we are constantly surprised about the instances in which they do make some difference. Lori Kilgore, Health Watch Breakthrough. Up next, Bob Breck's weather. We'll be right back. It's Domino's Pepperoni Passion. Now get irresistible pepperoni pizza deal starting at $6.99. Yeah, $6.99. Call for Domino's Better Than Ever Pizza with more cheese, tender, tastier crust, and lots of pepperoni. Nobody knows like Domino's. Domino's Pepperoni Passion. Deal starting at $6.99. When Schweigman opened in 1869, saving people money was our top goal. We stocked a bigger selection, bought price fixing, and more. Now on our 123rd anniversary, that goal remains the same. You'll check out at Schweigman with more for your money. During our anniversary, the Schweigman Photo Center is celebrating our new 4x6 big prints with a photo contest. Submit creative shots pertaining to Schweigman. You could win a Bahamas cruise and Walt Disney World family vacation on Premier's Big Red Boat from Schweigman. The perfect parents. Life is not a game. The perfect kids. He followed me home. The perfect family for... <laughs> Mazda Mania 2, the summer's premier sales event. Now get $1,000 cash back from Mazda on a Mazda MPV. Don't miss these gargantuan values. It's bad Don't miss Mazda Mania 2. Get $1,000 cash back on a new Mazda MPV now. News 8 weather is brought to you by Marita Old Fashioned Bread. It's no secret how kids feel about white bread. White bread is really good! But there is something you may not know. Delicious Marita white bread checks out healthy, too. No saturated fat, high in complex carbohydrates, no cholesterol. So you can feel as good serving Marita as your kids do eating it. Marita! Which is why every meal with Marita white bread makes for a very happy ending. Bob's here now with the latest on Andrew. Not to be taken lightly. No, nope, not when it's in Category 4, and uh, still not a certainty that it's coming here. But let me try and explain what's happening. Now, yesterday, Howard Bernstein told you about a blocking high out north of the storm that was forcing it to go more west. Well, that is still continuing this afternoon, but something has changed. And let me show you what has changed. Out over the Atlantic is another huge storm. Now, this is not a hurricane-type storm. That's called an extra tropical low, but it's diving southeastward, and the rotation around it actually has begun to take this high right into it. So it's shifting the high eastward, allowing the high to kind of rotate, or I should say, uh, allowing the storm to rotate around the high, and it's unfortunately not blocking us anymore, opening the way for the storm to come up over us. So that is not good news at all. And the other bad news, as the storm came across Miami last night, it lost a little of its intensity, but look what's happened to it this afternoon. Did you see what happened to it? Watch again. As it goes over Florida, all the reds are gone, and then boom, they're back this afternoon. What are those reds, you ask? Well, those reds are showing the colder cloud tops, 
and actually right around the center, you see this right here? This is called the eye wall, right around the storm. That's where all the damage, the destruction's at this afternoon. And it's that eye wall we want to avoid. So that's going to be the key here is the track of this storm. This is the daylight picture and it shows you how it's moving on a steadily westward course. Doesn't show the northward movement yet. The longer it can keep going west without making that turn north, the better for us. So what you want to do in watching these coordinates, the last time these were given, this only moved up one-tenth of a degree north, while this one here was 82.1. It moved a lot farther west than it did north. So keep your fingers crossed, gang. West winds at 18, it's still trucking pretty uh, fast. And anytime you get a big, massive storm like that moving so quickly, it's just hard for it to turn. So even though the computer guidance, and this is the second run that shows it like this, the guidance indicates it's going to make the turn. And we just can't doubt the guidance because it's such a massive storm and so powerful that we've got to overwarn people along the coast. This still could stay down here and avoid us. Don't know, can't take the chance, but around midnight tomorrow night, the eye will be coming ashore. By that time, we will be in hurricane conditions here, and then it'll be passing to our north. So there's a lot of, still, a lot of uncertainty, and that's why the probabilities here, notice, we're only 23%. That's still not very high. It's one of the higher numbers that you see here, and it appears that the bullseye is still along the Gulf Coast, but the storm is a long ways from us. But unfortunately, you do have to start the evacuation process very early across southeast Louisiana. That's why the warnings are up already. So I hate to tell you that all of the coast of the Louisiana coast under the hurricane warning, that'll stay up now until this storm comes ashore. I'm pretty certain of that. So there's, there's a lot to tell you there, and if you have to make the decision to leave, I would say, why don't you uh, make the decision on the safe side and not take a chance. This is the daylight picture over us, and we had some heavy weather flare up in spots, especially on the North Shore. I know local weather's not that important because it's so nice outside of us. We do have some rain on radar, and some of it is quite heavy, especially up towards Baton Rouge. By the way, if you're evacuating and you want to go up I-10, get on I-55 at Laplace. Do not go I-10 towards Baton Rouge because I-10 towards Baton Rouge is open, but it's down to one lane because of construction. These are the latest readings. We were up in the 90s again today. The wind's still not bad, but they will be, will be picking up. Hurricane warnings tonight, despite the fact it's going to be a nice night. Lows will be in the 70s. Tomorrow starts out nice, but the afternoon goes right in the dumper as conditions get really bad with lots of squalls. And we'll be updating you all night and into the day, into the day tomorrow. Obviously, the marine forecast is not even there, folks. That marine forecast go is yesterday's. <laughs> Don't go out. We didn't even give them a marine forecast yeah. because there's no reason Don't to. Don't go out. All right, Bob. Okay, back with more in a moment. Family after family made State Farm the largest insurer of cars and the largest insurer of homes. They made State Farm one of the largest and fastest growing of all life insurers, too. Because families are discovering the best agent for their car and their home and their other precious possessions is a State Farm agent. State Farm sells life insurance. And like a good neighbor, State Farm is there. Hi, folks. I'm Dennis Bergeron, Sr. And I'm Dennis Bergeron, Jr. And we are now your exclusive Volvo dealer in the greater New Orleans area. Volvo, one of the safest, if not the safest, car on the road today. We invite you to come and see our facilities on Veterans Boulevard, right in the heart of Metairie. We've been selling and servicing Chrysler products for 26 years, and now we're offering Volvo. With factory-trained mechanics and a complete parts inventory. We want your business, we'll trade to get it, and work hard to keep it. Thank you, and you have a nice day. Bergeron Plymouth Chrysler Volvo, now your exclusive New Orleans area Volvo dealer. Only Popeyes has onion rings this big, this delicious, this fresh, always made from scratch. And now get the big taste of Popeyes onion rings in two very big deals. Three pieces of New Orleans style chicken, six onion rings, and a buttermilk biscuit, only $2.99. Or ten pieces of chicken, 20 onion rings, and four biscuits, just $8.99. Two big deals on the big taste of Popeyes onion rings.
Taking pride in what's uniquely ours. The Whitney. Finally, let's recap. Mainly evacuations, shelters, and school closings. Once again, all low-lying areas of New Orleans are being forced to evacuate. A state of emergency has been declared in most area parishes, and most of the schools will be closed tomorrow and tonight. As far as evacuation centers, here is the list for you. Now, we just learned that in New Orleans, they have just moments ago opened two shelters. O. Perry Walker and John F. Kennedy will be open. In Metairie, the Red Cross shelters are at Archbishop Rummel, East Jeff, St. Angela, St. Catherine, Harris Junior High, Riverdale, and St. Bernard, St. Bernard High, and Chalmette High. And that's our news for now. We thank you for watching. And we'll be back again at 6 with all the latest. Peter Jennings and World News Tonight is next. Hurricane Andrew, which struck at southern Florida this morning, is still a very dangerous storm. Tonight, people in Louisiana and Mississippi have been warned that Andrew, now in the Gulf of Mexico, may visit them next. From ABC, this is World News Tonight with Peter Jennings. Good evening. It could have been a lot worse for a great many more people, but it was terrifying for some and fatal for a few. When Andrew roared across the Florida Peninsula just south of Miami, the winds were a steady 140 miles an hour, and the gusts were 165. The hurricane left a very messy imprint on the state, and by the time it was across the state and into the Gulf of Mexico, where it is now, eight people had died in the storm. We begin in Miami with ABC's Al Dale. The storm came ashore just before dawn south of the city. Daylight revealed the widespread destruction. Power lines, road signs, and stoplights littered the streets and hung as helplessly as the countless broken palm trees. The storm surge, a flood of seawater pushed ashore by the storm, was not as high as expected, but the wind and waves were enough to lift boats out of their moorings and onto dry land. Stack cars, one on top of the other, and deposit this rental van on the company's roof. And in neighborhood after neighborhood, Andrew had uprooted trees and ripped roofing and walls from thousands of businesses and homes. Steve Barnes and his family were among those who refused to evacuate. You could hear all the shingles and the roof peeling off. Um, we heard crashes into our house all the time. Did you at any point think that this was it, that it was over? Too bloody right I did. <laughs> Smith Carter stayed with his house too and watched it almost disintegrate around him. It's real difficult to explain that. You've got to go through it to realize what it is. The hardest hit area was Dade County south of the city, mostly suburbs stretching into rural countryside and the northern Keys. In the entire Miami area, two out of three homes lost electricity, affecting more than a million people. Without power, water purification stations had to shut down. So there is concern that the drinking water supply is not safe. People are being urged to boil their drinking water. The governor called out 1,500 National Guard troops, some of them engineers, to help in the cleanup, others to join police in keeping order and preventing looting. Still, some looting did take place at several stores and supermarkets. After the wind and rain subsided, roads were quickly clogged by people heading back to their homes and counting their losses or blessings. Megan, you're the luckiest one. You won't remember this. Many storm-battered South Floridians, relieved to have survived, immediately began cleaning up the mess that the hurricane left behind. Officials say that it would have been a lot worse if, hurricane, uh, if the hurricane had hit Miami head-on instead of drifting a little bit to the south as it did. Peter? Yeah, well, uh, do you have one impression or one image besides would that one right behind you there? Well, would you accept to including that one? This one multiplied many times, plus I was struck by the how many people were out so early cleaning up the mess. I saw no one sitting down and wailing, but people were out with shovels and rakes and hauling things away. But the impression is at this time, people really paid attention to the warning, in part because it came from people living in their own neighborhood, right? That's right, and uh, there was a lot of lead time, a lot of warning time, and most people did, although there has been some publicity about the people who stayed behind. Most people in evacuation areas did leave. They had plenty of time to do it, and that's a testimony to uh, technology today on predicting these things. Okay, Al, thanks very much. In fact, Florida officials had issued evacuation orders to about a million residents uh, considered in the most danger, those nearest the coastline, and as Al Dale points out, most of them, about three-quarters of a million, listened. Some didn't, and they were very lucky. ABC's Linda Vitillo has been on Miami Beach. 
To the residents of the Julie Arms apartment, today was just another day to sit on the front porch and keep each other company now that the storm has passed. Like many elderly residents of Miami Beach, they had refused instructions to evacuate. If you can live through six years of bombing in Berlin during World War II, you're not afraid of a little hurricane. We just sat there and talked and uh, <laughs> light the candles. Most have lived in tiny efficiency apartments in South Beach for decades, and they scoff at fears that they would have faced serious danger if Andrew had hit closer. No, really, actually, I wasn't afraid because I used a good, sturdy building I'm in. I'm not afraid. I've been through five big ones. You're not afraid. No, I The worst one was Donald. Donald lasted 24 hours, and Cleo, we didn't have lectures for five days. Now that they have made it through another hurricane, officials here worry elderly residents will be even more likely to ignore their warnings the next time. Linda Patillo, ABC News, South Miami Beach. Hurricanes which pick up moisture and thus power from the warm waters of the ocean tend to lose it over land, but southern Florida is only 100 miles or so wide at the point that Andrew went across, and Andrew still had plenty left when it reached the other side. And that's where ABC's Mike Von Fram was, on the Gulf Coast, near the Florida city of Naples. The wind sweeping through Naples reached 100 miles per hour. It was about that time Ben Davidson, his wife and friends, began to second-guess their decision to ride out the storm at the funeral chapel where he lives and works. It come and tell me I should have evacuated. <laughs> Too late now. Down power lines set palm trees on fire. And there was plenty of other cosmetic damage. Part of the metal roof on this hotel was blown off, as was the top of this mobile home. But on the Gulf Coast, there were few injuries and nowhere near the structural damage that had been feared. One reason is that mobile homes in southern Florida are required by law to be anchored to the ground. And building codes require new houses to withstand winds of at least 110 miles per hour. Andrew passed over more than 100 miles of land from one Florida coast to the other, remaining very much intact. And thanks to some planning, so did many of the homes and buildings in its path. Mike Von from ABC News, Naples. The National Hurricane Center certainly had a bird's eye view. The center in Coral Gables had part of its radar system on the roof knocked out. Its director, Bob Sheets, had his own home damaged and a couple of his employees lost theirs. Mr. Sheets has once again spent most of today telling people like us what to watch for next. Bob, did this hurricane live up to your expectations? Well, yes, it was a very strong hurricane that came across the South Florida and of course, they're very difficult to deal with when you not only are forecasting and warning for them, but they visit you at the same time. Where is it now, and how strong? It's now moved off into the uh, Gulf of Mexico. It's a Category 4 hurricane on our Saffir Simpson scale. It means up there 140 mile per hour winds and, and uh, heading toward the uh, Louisiana and Mississippi coastline. Can you tell if any particular section is more vulnerable than others? Well, the probability right across that area, we're putting up a uh, hurricane warning uh, here this evening for the Mississippi and uh, uh, Louisiana coast, basically going from Pascagoula, Mississippi, over to Vermilion Bay in Louisiana. Now, with a hurricane over water again, what's its potential to increase its strength? Well, it's possible. We've got it up there again as a Category 4 hurricane, and quite frankly, we don't do all that good a job of uh, predicting that last uh, 20 miles per hour up or down. What's the difference between 140 and 165 miles an hour? We call those Category 5s when they get above 155 miles per hour, but sometimes I think those are sort of artificial things, and an extra 5 miles per hour doesn't make a whole lot of difference. But as far as you're concerned, this is, for some people in the country, far from over. Uh, very much so. It uh, certainly uh, needs to be taken serious. Uh, I went out to look at some of the uh, problems we had here in uh, Dade County from that Category 4 hurricane, and, and indeed it does, uh, does a lot of damage. Thanks for your time. Bob Sheets at the Hurricane Center to give you a slightly more concrete sense of the power that a Category 4 hurricane has. Imagine what happens when you've seen all those roofs gone. Small homes are destroyed because the air gets under the roof, which then acts as a wing and literally lifts the house right off its foundation. President Bush altered his campaign schedule today so he could fly to Florida. He arrived in Miami late this afternoon. He has already declared certain counties disaster areas. 
which entitles people to federal money as they try to rebuild what Andrew destroyed. In a moment, President Bush says what the country needs now is a new job training program. Governor Clinton says that sounds very familiar. In the Middle East, Israel makes some concessions to the Palestinians. Will they be enough to make progress at the peace table? And the U.S. Marines who survived a friendly fire incident during the Persian Gulf War, why they feel betrayed. This is World News Tonight with Peter Jennings. Brought to you by the Discover Car. So you just got a cash advance, did you? Too bad you used an ordinary credit card. Because you could be carrying very heavy interest charges. Why not carry the Discover card? Just pay your full monthly balance on a small transaction fee and we'll forget the interest. Which means our money comes with no strings attached. It pays to Discover. Now you don't need a prescription to get prescription strength medicine for itches and rashes. Introducing new maximum strength cord aid. Now with twice the healing medicine. New maximum strength cord aid. Prescription strength without a prescription. It's night and day the difference Correctol makes when I'm a regular. Correctol is the gentle woman's laxative that works predictably overnight. No wonder more women trust it. Correctol. Gently, predictably, overnight. Four days after the Republican convention, it's clear Mr. Bush did get something of a lift in the polls from all that exposure. The ABC News poll completed last night shows that President Bush has cut the Clinton lead to six points, 48% for Governor Clinton and 42% for Mr. Bush. There was a proposal on jobs for Mr. Bush today. It's designed in part to retrain American workers who might lose their jobs to foreign competition as a result of the free trade agreement with Canada and Mexico. Democrats say its timing is certainly political and that many of the ingredients are not very new. Here's ABC's Britt Hume. The president went to a vocational school in New Jersey to announce something he no doubt wishes were not so badly needed. A $3 billion a year plan to take effect sometime next year to train young workers and retrain older ones so they can find jobs. A program that is bold, it is innovative, and it is loyal only to the future and to the needs of the American workers. About a third of the money, a billion dollars a year, would be spent on a range of programs for young people, including the expansion under a new name of the Federal Job Corps, a program the administration had previously opposed expanding. Most of the rest of the money, totaling about $2 billion a year, would provide $3,000 retraining vouchers for unemployed workers, or those whose jobs seem in danger. The workers could then use the vouchers to pay the cost of their own job training. The president said the cost of these programs would be covered by cuts in other programs, but he did not specify which ones, and he will not do so until he has to in next year's budget. He did attack the way he claimed Bill Clinton would pay for his job training program. He sees job training as a, as a tax raiser, and he wants to tax workers to pay for their own training and tax small businesses, the one that's the worst. Taxing small businesses around the country, 1.5%. The president is trying to portray even the smallest disagreement between him and his opponent as a major ideological clash. The White House calls that sharpening the differences. The idea is to make Clinton seem somehow a far-out liberal, and the president, therefore, the only safe choice. Rick Hume, ABC News, and Sonia, Connecticut. Governor Clinton was in Arkansas today, taking part of the day off doing state business. He said that uh, Mr. Bush's proposals were, in many respects, a sincere form of flattery because they were an imitation of much that he's put forward since the beginning of the campaign. He criticized Mr. Bush for saying what he did about who was going to pay for this. Governor Clinton said he would indeed make employers pay for this in many cases where Mr. Bush had suggested that government should pay. He had a visitor today in the person of Paul Songus, the former senator who was his chief rival during the primary campaign. Paul Songus went after Mr. Bush, saying he couldn't pay for it because of the tax deficit or because of the national deficit. Mr. Songus endorsed Mr. Clinton, but our reporter on the scene tells us not with enormous enthusiasm, at least not on the subject of the deficit. On Wall Street today, the Dow Jones Industrials lost nearly 26 points to close at 32.28, and the trading was moderate. In the Middle East today, some changes in the way Israel treats those Palestinians living under Israeli occupation. A report when we come back.
It's Domino's Pepperoni Passion. Now get irresistible pepperoni pizza deal starting at $6.99. Yeah, $6.99. Call for Domino's Better Than Ever Pizza with more cheese, tender, tastier crust, and lots of pepperoni. Nobody knows like Domino's. Domino's Pepperoni Passion. Deal starting at $6.99. The makers of Dimetap know it's important for allergy and cold sufferers to trust their medication. Doctors and pharmacists have trusted the Dimetap brand for safe, effective relief for 30 years. You can trust Dimetap Extend Tabs for 12 hours of allergy relief. And if you're concerned about drowsiness, Dimetap contains one of the least sedating, non-prescription antihistamines. Trust Dimetap. The number one doctor-recommended antihistamine decongestant non-prescription formula. After examining, testing, it's a fact. You can buy new Preparation H hydrocortisone cream with the maximum strength available without a prescription to relieve problem itch. New Preparation H hydrocortisone cream. Prescription strength without a prescription. Look, I'm needing corn on the cob. Thanks to Super Poly Grip in the easy-to-use pump. Super Poly Grip holds so tight, many denture wearers can enjoy more of their favorite foods. Even corn on the cob. Super Poly Grip. In Washington today, Israelis and Arabs have begun their sixth round of peace talks. The Israeli and Syrian delegates were actually saying reasonable things about each other. The new tone is at least partly the result of the fact that Israel has a new prime minister who has won some points by taking a more conciliatory attitude towards Palestinians than the man he replaced. Here's ABC's Dean Reynolds. Security fences that had penned Palestinians into their refugee camps were coming down today. Some Palestinian homes that were sealed as punishment are to be reopened. And the other penalty of blowing them up is under review. Some 800 Palestinian prisoners are to be given early release this week. And 11 men due to be deported have had their expulsion orders revoked. Prime Minister Rabin is hoping these new gestures will jumpstart the peace talks and make Palestinians more receptive to his plan to give them autonomy or self-rule. But Palestinians and Israelis continue to disagree over what autonomy means. The Israelis envision general elections next spring for a 15-member Palestinian administrative council to manage affairs in the West Bank and Gaza Strip. But the Palestinians want the elections to create a 180-seat legislature along the lines of those in full-fledged nations. Autonomy, they say, must be a stepping stone to independence. Some Palestinians suspect that Rabin is easing the occupation to curry American favor, but has no intention of ending it. From the fact we are witnessing on the ground, uh, so far this is just a lip service. But the well-timed Israeli gestures have put the Palestinians on the defensive and raised questions about what, if anything, they are prepared to do in return to keep the peace process going. Dean Reynolds, ABC News, Tel Aviv. In Sarajevo today, the fighting was particularly intense as both the Serbs and the Bosnians are apparently trying to control as much territory as they can before so-called peace talks begin in London on Wednesday. The airport took another direct hit, which forced the United Nations to stop relief flights for part of the day. When we come back, the U.S. Marines who survived a friendly fire incident during the Gulf War and why they say today that they feel forsaken. Athlete's foot fungus grows beneath the surface of your skin. To cure it, you've got to get down to the root of the problem. You need Mycotin. Mycotin penetrates the surface of your skin with myconazole to cure athlete's foot where it grows. Step up to the mic. Mycotin. If you're under a physician's care for high blood pressure, ulcers, or asthma, then your choice of a non-prescription pain reliever is especially important for millions of people like you. The one doctors recommend most is Tylenol. The time, morning. I'd like to wake up to this cop in the morning. The place, the five-star Arizona Biltmore. The aroma is, is wonderfully enticing. The coffee, not their usual fresh brewed. Today, for our specially invited guests, it's been secretly switched to Folgers Crystals. Great. I think it's, I think it's very rich. It would help wake us up. It would help wake us up even better. Get us better. going. This would start my day off great. Mountain-grown Folgers Crystals. Coffee rich enough to be served in America's finest restaurants. I'll drink the bar. To get rid of her gray, my wife can spend 40 minutes. But I discovered this five-minute hair coloring. The revolutionary discovery called Just for Men from the leader in men's hair coloring. Simply apply Just for Men and in five minutes shampoo out. 
gray is blended away. The look of my natural color is back in five minutes. That was me, and it won't fade or wash out. My hair takes forever, but you look great in just five minutes. The look of your natural color in just five minutes with Just For Men. Nabisco shredded wheat. It's just good stuff. The results tonight of an ABC News investigation into one of the so-called friendly fire incidents during the war in the Persian Gulf. 35 of the 146 Americans who died in the Gulf War were fired on in one way or another by Americans. In this particular incident, U.S. Marines who fired on other Marines. A year and a half later, those who survived say the Marine Corps in which they serve has abandoned them. Here's ABC's James Walker. December 31st, 1990, Marine Lance Corporal Alicio Felix celebrates New Year's Eve in the Saudi desert. Felix drove a mobile howitzer like this one. His crew chief was Staff Sergeant Mike Almanza. The third member of the crew was Corporal Rick Ramirez. One month later, their unit would come under attack, not from the Iraqis, but from a bomber flown by fellow Marines. Come on, baby, just go a little bit left. Get relief. Okay, go complete right. I'm tracking. I'm sure Keep your eye on the bright white dots, the mobile howitzers and supply trucks moving down a desert road in the darkness. This is how they looked to the Marine Corps pilot and navigator as they maneuvered to bomb what they thought was an Iraqi convoy. Okay, get ready to roll out. Giant convoy now. After dropping 11 cluster bombs, the pilot released a 500-pound laser-guided bomb. All right, come right. Hold it steady. Easy. Yeah, go ahead. Keep coming. Looking good. Looking good. Come on, baby. Come on, baby. Come on. Hit there. Hit there. Hit there. The bomb hit the gun barrel on Alicio Felix's howitzer, hurling chunks of shrapnel into the vehicle. Felix died from massive head injuries. Mike Almanza lost his right arm. From my, this part of my hand up, I have none. You have no sensation? <laughs> Rick Ramirez almost died from head wounds. He is trying to regain his equilibrium and coordination. We showed him videotape of the attack obtained by ABC News. Oh, man. I would like to know what's going to happen to that, to those people who put the trigger. I would like to know. The Marine Corps investigated the attack and discovered that the air crew had failed to use the plane's navigation system to pinpoint their location. They were supposed to be attacking targets in Kuwait. Instead, they were 15 miles off course inside Saudi Arabia. Investigators recommended the pilot and navigator be charged with negligent homicide. But the top Marine in Saudi Arabia General Walter Boomer rejected the recommendation and allowed the crew to keep flying while under supervision for one year. I think they made a dumb mistake. They didn't kill someone intentionally. It wasn't negligent homicide. I guess I'm sorry that nothing that really happened to them. You know, they didn't go slap on the hand. Hey, I'll, I'll give them my right hand, they can slap on that for a while. But, Mike you know, Almanza says he understands that friendly fire happens in war but he believes there is a reason why the plane's crew did not receive more serious punishment, why the survivors never got an explanation or an apology. It goes back to the old, old theory of they take care of their own. There's no other way of putting it. You know, the officers take care of the officers and enlisted take care of the enlisted. They didn't tell me nothing. I was basically forgot about. They, they try to cover themselves up, I think. The Marine Corps has refused to identify the pilot and navigator because they have not been charged with any crime. ABC News has learned the pilot, Captain Michael Parkin, is still flying at a Marine base in California. The navigator, Captain James O'Hagan, works here at Marine Corps headquarters. We tried to talk to him as he left work. I'm Jimmy Walker with ABC News. I wanted to chat with you about that friendly fire incident. 
Why didn't you write the families and apologize to them or explain what happened? Mike Almanza believes the Marine desire to downplay the incident is why he has not received a retirement ceremony despite 18 years in the Corps. You know, you're standing out there in all these parades and ceremonies, and you're saying, dang, one day I'll have my day in the sun. And you never got and it? And I never got it. General Boomer acknowledges that was a mistake. That's not the way we treat Marines. That, that's not what we believe. That's not what we teach. That's not what we talk about. Marine Corps officials now promise they will get in touch with the victims. But the men who were caught in that deadly accident wonder why it has taken a year and a half for Marine loyalty to extend to them. James Walker, ABC News, Port Huron, Michigan. We'll be back in just a moment. Before we ship a new Buick LeSabre, it must meet an international standard of excellence. If it fails to meet a single electrical check, if the aim of the headlight isn't true, if the seams are not measured to the millimeter, we don't ship it. So if you buy a Buick LeSabre for its quality, you won't be missing the boat, even though it doesn't come by boat. It's Domino's Pepperoni Passion. Now get irresistible pepperoni pizza deal starting at $6.99. Yes, yeah, $6.99. Call for Domino's Better Than Ever Pizza with more cheese, tender, tastier crust, and lots of pepperoni. Nobody knows like Domino's. Domino's Pepperoni Passion. Deal starting at $6.99. Now you don't need a prescription to get prescription strength medicine for itches and rashes. Introducing new Maximum Strength Cordaid. Now with twice the healing medicine. New Maximum Strength Cordaid. Prescription strength without a prescription. To pull her through a nasty lunch, Maalox uses aluminum and magnesium. But his antacid is Tums. And Tums has calcium. Something my body needs anyway. I like that. Calcium-rich Tums. Tonight on Nightline, Hurricane Andrew. Where it is and where it's headed. We get the latest from two trackers who flew into the eye of the storm. Tonight. Just before we leave, an update on Hurricane Andrew. It struck southern Florida earlier this morning. It's just south of Miami with winds of about 140 miles an hour. Eight people were killed, but many people may have been spared because it was south of Miami. The winds were very powerful, as you can see, powerful enough, ripped trees from the ground, ripped roofs and walls from thousands of businesses and homes. About a million people had been told to evacuate the area. Three quarters of them listened. At the moment, Hurricane Andrew was in the Gulf of Mexico. People in Louisiana and Mississippi have been warned that the hurricane is coming in their direction and they should prepare because the hurricane is now out of our water again. It is gaining strength and moisture from being over water. A million people in Florida without electricity tonight. Many water supplies have been contaminated by salt water, however long that may last. And President Bush is down there tonight having declared it a disaster area. But these scenes repeated all across the 100 mile wide peninsula from the east coast to the west. A force four hurricane with winds of 145 to 160 miles an hour at the guest. It's been a very bad day for some people in some parts of the country. I'm Peter Jennings in New York. Good night. This has been a presentation of ABC News. More Americans get their news from ABC News than from any other source. This is Louisiana's news leader. Channel 4's Eyewitness News Nightwatch. You can see the Andrew, a powerful hurricane takes aim at the central Gulf Coast, packing winds of 140 miles an hour. New Orleans gets ready. Emergency preparations underway in the metro area. And in Miami, 10 people die as the hurricane blasts across southern Florida.
Good evening. Hurricane Andrew tonight is on a collision course for New Orleans. Uh, it looks as though the killer storm may hit land uh, perhaps a little bit earlier than expected. And Dave Barnes has been watching that all night long. Dave? Well, John, that's just a possibility. And I want to bring it up simply because we want to play it on the safe side. We don't really know exactly where it's going to landfall. We don't know exactly what time. But we'd rather be a little bit early than late. What I've noticed this evening is that it's picked up speed just a little bit, running almost 20 miles per hour. Now, of course, it's going to run into that change in the steering currents, which is going to slow it up just a little bit and try to nudge it to the north. I mean by that maybe on a more northwesterly course. There are those steering currents. So, yes, we think it's going to slow up somewhat later tonight and tomorrow, but still, to play it's just a little bit on the safe side. I think there's uh, a possibility, a fair possibility, that perhaps by tomorrow evening sometime, it could be somewhere to the south or southeast of the Mississippi River, maybe 20, 30, 40 miles, something along that line. And I, I'd rather play it safe and base the forecast on that than to uh, be talking in terms of another 12 hours or so, because once those tides come up, it's going to be very difficult, if possible at all, for anybody to get out of low-lying areas. And Andrew, if you're plotting, it's now about 26.3 north, 26.3 north, 85.7 west, moving just a little bit north of due west at, again, close to 20 miles per hour. Highest winds, 170, and we've also noticed that during the afternoon and evening hours that to the north of the storm center, the hurricane force winds in some cases extend out as much as 70 miles, gale force as much as 140 miles. Now, with regard to the motion and uh, other factors concerning the storm, of course, Nash Roberts Group has been following this very, very closely, and I'd like to go to Nash now to get his comments on our current situation. Nash? Thank you, Dave. You've pretty well covered it, uh, but I want to reiterate and go along with you uh, that the current tracking shows the storm going in somewhere around Grand Isle or in this area between the mouth of the river and Morgan City. Uh, I would say tomorrow evening or at the latest, at the latest, early on Wednesday morning, but I would be ready for it in that area uh, by sunset tomorrow. Now, another thing that you have to remember is that, as Dave mentioned there, we still have that little prospect of the, possibly the storm taking a more northerly turn because of the change in steering currents. We won't know anything about that, though, for sure, until sometime tomorrow morning to see if Andrew reacts. I want to quickly tell you a few little things about how you can judge for yourself what the storm is doing in your neighborhood. If your winds are east, northeast, or east, and they stay that way, the storm is probably headed right for you. If your winds shift to the southeast, then the storm is to your west, passing over to your west. If your winds shift to northwest, then the storm is passing to your east. So by watching the winds, you can tell pretty much what the storm is doing as it approaches you. Another thing that you have to remember is that as the eye goes over you, if you're at the middle of the storm, suppose this eye in this case is 17 nautical miles across, and its speed is 17 to 18 miles an hour, well, then you're going to be in the calm section for about an hour. But if you're on this part of the storm, or this part of the storm, you'll be in the eye a lot shorter period. Bear in mind that when, by the time the eye comes ashore, you have already experienced half of the storm's bad weather. In other words, from here to here, half of your weather is already in by the time the eye hits the coastline. So don't get too preoccupied with the time that the actual eye hits the coastline because you're going to have a lot of bad weather before that ever happens. And then bear in mind that after the eye passes, the winds are going to reverse to the southwest. Just a few things that you ought to bear in mind. One other thing. We had a buoy out here, a data buoy, reported the storm going right over the data buoy, and it never did report anything over 38 knots or 44 miles an hour. There may be a ma malfunction with the buoy, I don't know. But that, in three hours, in close proximity to the storm, it never showed over 44 miles an hour. Now back to Dave. 
Nash, thanks very much. And let me quickly uh, say, don't forget, get out early because by sunrise, there's a possibility that the tides could be up enough that the coastal roads would be flooded. I'll have much more on Andrew in a few more minutes, John. All right, Dave, the evacuation order uh, was issued already for Lafitte and other parts of the West Bank early this afternoon. Since then, residents have been steadily streaming out of that area. Let's go to Mike Longman now, who joins us with an update. Mike? John, uh, we are just down the road from Bell Chase High School, where busloads have just arrived from Buras and also Point Sulphur. Bell Chase High School, one of the main shelters for Plaquemines Parish. Now, at last count, some 200 evacuees were there. So far, uh, evacuees have the luxury of an entire classroom for their family, but uh, as things continue, likely this will overflow into the giant gymnasium. Not far away, as you mentioned, in Lafitte. People there also preparing to evacuate, some evacuating already, many moving early because they remember Hurricane Juan. It's a big rush. Get it together, boo, take it out. <laughs> Ooh, Where are you going? No, no, no. That's all I can say, no. Throughout the afternoon, Lafitte saw vessels of all size headed for safe harbor. Those that could hauled their boats out of the water for transport to higher ground. Every hurricane we pull out, we don't want to go find in the swamps. <laughs> How does this one look to you? <laughs> Looks pretty rough. Looks like it might hit us, so we decide to get it out. The evacuation here in Lafitte became mandatory as of late this afternoon. And they think it could be, could be um, a bad hurricane, so they, they want the people out. I agree with them. Hurricane Juan left much of the west bank of Jefferson underwater. Feet residents say they will not stick around for Andrew. Man, by scrambling, trying to get out, water rolling in, traffic couldn't get out after the water got in. You know, so I ain't waiting till the last minute this time. You're looking at basically the Gulf of Mexico moving in the top of the left. And you're looking at his alone. That's 15 feet of water. At emergency preparedness headquarters, residents who stopped by were told why the parish was recommending the entire West Bank evacuate. Sheriff deputies will stay behind to make sure the looting that happened in Florida is not repeated here. We intend to challenge anyone walking throughout the area that have been evacuated if they're carrying articles uh, we're concerned and we're going to check them and to verify who they are and that uh, what they're carrying is not uh, anything taken now again on jefferson parish the recommendation is that the entire uh, west bank uh, evacuate that is only a, a recommendation however in the community of lafitte and uh, areas around there barataria outside the levee system they are making it a mandatory evacuation and john uh, because of concerns about the tidal surge and the roads being covered over here, as Dave mentioned, uh, many people are taking this warning a lot earlier than they did with past storms. Some of them got caught during one and just could not get out. The roads became impassable, and they had to weather out that storm. So people do seem to be moving a little bit earlier with Andrew. Back to you, John. And, Mike, I think for emphasis' sake, uh, Jefferson, Parish Chair, or Jefferson Parish President Mike Yenny has uh, another message tonight. Yenny is strongly urging West Bank residents in Jefferson Parish to evacuate. He says that residents of uh, Lafitte and Crown Point should know that Highway 45 will be closed at 7 tomorrow morning. That's at the V-Line levee. Highway 45, they will close. The Lafitte-La Rose Highway will still be open. Work crews spend much of the evening piling sand at the South Shore approach to the causeway. That, uh, the idea there is to build up as much of a makeshift levee as possible to keep rising water from moving onto the roadway and down into buildings and homes. Sandbagging will begin tomorrow morning in New Orleans East. Hoda Kotb joins us now with an update on preparations in that part of the city. Hoda? John, I'm at the corner of Highway 90 and US 11. Now, most areas east of me are under mandatory orders to evacuate. Over the past hour or so, we've seen a, a steady stream of cars just sort of leaving the area. Now, in this spot, or about a quarter of a mile up, crews will start setting up a sandbag makeshift levee like you were talking about. So that means tonight, a lot of people are heading out. People from Rigolese, Venetian Islands, Lake Catherine, and the Irish Bayou. They're all leaving. They live and make their living on the Irish Bayou. Now, these people worry that the water that brings them their livelihood will also take away all they've worked for. Well, basically what I'm afraid of is, first of all, the water rising, and then if the hurricane hits this way, the surging seas. 
it'll go completely over my house. She's leaving early tomorrow, as are most people, on the Irish Bayou, Wrigley's, Lake Catherine, and surrounding areas. They are sealing off their homes and hoping. This 71-year-old man was born and raised on the bayou and has weathered many storms. Well, I was in the 47, anything from the 47 all the way up to the 1. I stood right here on the bayou. And you never left then? I never did leave, no. But you're going to leave now? Yeah, I'm going to leave this time because I got a trailer. If I had a good, strong house, I wouldn't leave. But I don't trust the trailer. But some will not leave. These guys are preparing their home, and they say they'll ride out the storm. We're just trying to save whatever we can in case it does come to the worst. Are you, are you worried about staying here? Not really. I've been through, I was, I think I was 12 years old when we went through Betsy and stuff, so I'm pretty used to. Councilwoman Jackie Clarkson is trying to discourage those in mandatory evacuation areas from staying. Most people just can't believe that, you know, this is really happening and, and it's because it is so frightening. And Mayor Bartholomew is now focused on New Orleans and wondering if there will be a mandatory evacuation here. No, if, if it hits uh, Grand Isle, I don't think we're going to have to evacuate the, the higher ground areas of the city. So we're hopeful if it continues to uh, move north and east, uh, we will not have that problem. And Fire Chief Earl Juno joins us now from New Orleans East. Now, Chief, they're going to be sandbagging, like you said, just about a quarter mile down the road. What's that going to be like? How high and why do you need that? Well, uh, this, uh, the road crosses through the hurricane protection levee over here, and the road bed does go up, but it doesn't clear the levee. The levee's, the road's cut down into the levee, and they're going to sandbag crossing between four, between four and six feet high. The whole road bed is going to be covered with sandbags to replace the levee where the road goes through it. And when's this going to be happening, do you think, Chief? Well, we've been told that they're going to try to uh, complete this by 9 o'clock. The levy board is, in fact, going to be doing this tomorrow morning. Okay, so you're, gonna, you're encouraging, I guess, folks to get out now while they, while they can before that, uh, that goes up. Yes, because once the sandbags are down, I don't know how they're going to get out. Uh, probably the other roads around this area are going to also be sandbags, so now's a good time. Okay, thanks a lot, Chief. A word of advice there. If folks do live east of 90, the best time to get out would be now since they're going to start sandbagging tomorrow morning at 9 o'clock, and it'd be tough to get out after that. John, back to you. All right, thanks, Hoda. If you're planning to evacuate, here are some routes out of the area. If you're heading west, we want to mention that authorities are telling us that you'll have to get off, or at least they strongly advise you to get off, at I-55 on the I-10. Get off at I-55 to avoid road construction, which will slow you down. You'll make better time if you go to I-12 and then across to Baton Rouge from there at the Hammond exit. Airline Highway is also an option for those headed to Baton Rouge. Uh, if you're heading towards the east, you can take I-10 to I-59. We haven't talked about I-59. That takes you in the direction of Hattiesburg, so 55 and 59 are the two most northerly interstate roads. On the north shore, you can take I-12 east or west towards Baton Rouge. Uh, in Plaquemines, of course, on the uh, West Bank, Highway 23 is the route out. In Lafouche, Highway 1, and uh, St. Bernard residents looking to leave the area can take either St. Claude or Claiborne into the city. Uh, residents there also can take Paris Road to Interstate 10 and head either, either to the east or west. Here are some shelters open for those who are evacuating. Rummel High School, East Jeff High School, St. Rita School, St. Angela School, St. Catherine, Harris Junior High, Bonneville High, Riverdale High, Ottoman Elementary, another uh, evacuation center, a shelter, Barb Middle School, the uh, LSU Centriplex, and Campus Fieldhouse. In Plaquemines Parish, uh, residents uh, can go to the Belchase High School and the Belchase Auditorium. Uh, some shelters in Terrebonne Parish starting at 7 o'clock tomorrow morning, the Municipal Auditorium for Medical Dependent People, Ellender High School in Terrebonne, also Elysian Field School, Gibson Elementary, Homa Junior High and Shreva School. Uh, in St. Bernard Parish, St. Uh, Bernard High School and Chalmette High, and uh, three more in the New Orleans area, John Kennedy High, Perry, O. Perry Walker, and Gayar Elementary. And still ahead on Eyewitness News Night Watch, Mike Ross reports on the big move to get boats out of the area, and we'll take a look at the path of destruction Andrew left behind in Florida. Did you know that many of Louisiana's top car and truck dealers are on the West Bank? On the West Bank, we have lower overhead and sell more cars, so we charge less. 
With 12 dealerships and 20 different lines, there's variety, service, and most of all, low prices. Plus, the West Bank dealerships are close to each other, so it's easy to shop and compare. Take a drive, save some money, and don't be confused. When you're looking for a deal, come over to the West Bank. We sell more cars and trucks at prices you won't believe. Light. It is the first element of creation. Nothing brings it more elegantly or shapes it more beautifully than Anderson windows and patio doors. Look at your Lincoln Mercury dealer's summer saving storm. The storm hits big with $2,000 cash back on Lincoln Town Car. Featuring standard dual airbags and anti-lock brakes. Make your best deal and save even more. It picks up more power with big cash on Grand Marquis from your local dealer. Plus, Lincoln Mercury adds in up to $2,400 on this safety leader with available dual airbags and anti-lock brakes. So hurry and take a good look at huge savings on Town Car and Grand Marquis before the storm passes you by. Shock therapy, severe depression, suicidal tendencies. These aren't the first words you think of about Dick Cabot. But on the next Entertainment Tonight, you'll get the courageous inside story on the private demons he has fought in the public eye. A tiny part of you that remains sane thinks, is this suicide I'm talking about? Dick Cabot's courage and ultimate triumph. The inside story is only on Entertainment Tonight. Tonight at 10.35 on WWL-TV Channel 4. As you might expect, most schools will be closed tomorrow. It's impossible for us to go through everyone, but uh, uh, the vast majority of students without school. Here are the school systems affecting the most students in the area. Orleans Catholic Schools will be closed. Of course, New Orleans Public Schools haven't started yet. St. Bernard Public and Catholic Schools, Jefferson Parish Public and Catholic Schools, St. John Public Schools, St. James Public Schools will be closed, although faculty are to report in St. James. UNO will be closed, as will Xavier, Suno, and also you can add Dillard to that list. We just got that in, haven't had time to print it up, but Dillard, no classes. St. Charles Public Schools, Homa Thibodeau Catholic Schools, and St. Tammany Public Schools, also Loyola University. Here are some quick notes from emergency officials in the surrounding area. St. Charles Parish issued a voluntary evacuation for residents at 7.15 tonight. They say they'll make that mandatory if the conditions worsen. St. Tammany Parish authorities are asking the residents who live near Lake Pontchartrain evacuate immediately. The request uh, is voluntary at this point, although they too say it could be mandatory later. Sheriff Pat Canulet is concerned about people getting out before the traffic gets too bad. Slidell police are asking that residents on the city's south side begin a voluntary evacuation. Uh, there are no certified evacuation centers in that area, no evacuation centers. And uh, St. James authorities are urging a voluntary evacuation. Residents in Lower Terrebonne Parish have uh, bitter memories of the last hurricane that hit their area seven years ago. Mike Ross reports they spent the day preparing for the threat of a new storm they hope will just go away. The time had come to winch up the boats and get out of town. We live in Mississippi. Then. Bad as I hate to, we're going to carry it home, you know, kind of... I water. John and Robert Bates were loading up everything they could move out of their camp, still hoping the storm would go somewhere else. I sure do. I wish it'd go back out in the Gulf and just dissipate and wouldn't give anybody any trouble. Might be wishful thinking. <laughs> I'm afraid so. The folks who live around here and who own camps in Cocodree remember the last hurricane that ravaged this area, Hurricane Juan, back in 1985. The storm surge from Juan covered South Terrebonne Parish with six feet of flood water. Johnny Glover, owner of Coco Marina, waited too long to evacuate back then and had to ride out the storm in Cocodry. There was everything floating. I mean, there was barges, boats, water tanks, diesel tanks away. It just wasn't safe to leave in the boat. I won't do that again, but I will have this, I will plan the same method. I will try to be the last one to leave in one of my boats, but I will leave a little sooner maybe than last time. <laughs> David Kniff remembers that last hurricane, too. He was busy today boarding up his camp. For Hurricane Juan, water level came up to about this area here. And that was just a strong storm surge, so I imagine 
Let me get you to place that much. Commercial shrimpers and fishermen prepared too. They headed inland to try to beat the closure of the hurricane protection lock. F.A. Prosplayer moved his shrimp boat to Shenandoah to what he hopes will be safer water. They just going to uh, tie it up and try to ride it out in the boat and hopefully everything works out okay. That is the wish of everyone in South Terrebonne Parish tonight. I'm Mike Ross, Eyewitness News, Nightwatch. The people who live in Grand Isle are all too familiar with evacuations. They were the first to get the order and most wasted no time in boarding up their homes. Uh, many residents say they aren't sure if their homes can withstand a direct hit from the storm. As Miami picks up the pieces tonight in the aftermath of Andrew, the death toll is climbing. Police in the Miami area say 10 people are dead, and there are three confirmed dead in the Bahamas. Andrew struck southern Florida early this morning. 160 mile an hour winds and a 12 foot tidal surge flattened homes and businesses. It knocked out electricity to more than one million people, actually stripped the paint off some houses, threw cars and trucks around like building blocks, although one survivor kept it in perspective. Oh, I'm gonna pull through. I'll find some place. It's gotta be some place. These are material things. You have each other. Oh, my family's here. We're all together. In the hours just after the hurricane, store owners had problems with looting. The National Guard has been called in, and Dade County, the Miami area, is under a curfew tonight. <laughs> president Bush greeted residents in the Miami area tonight as he looked over the damage. The president flew to Florida from Connecticut, where he had been campaigning. Mr. Bush has already declared par parts of South Florida a disaster area. Dave Barnes will have the latest coordinates and the projected path for the hurricane up next. To get a better idea on the strength of this storm, this is a stronger storm at the moment anyway than Betsy. Not quite as strong as Camille, but, but really in, in the ballpark between. of Camille. That's right, that's right. Highest winds, uh, 140 miles per hour, so it's a Category 4 storm right now, John. One thing that's happened uh, during the day is that the hurricane force winds extend a little further out to the north about 70 miles and gale force about 140 miles. There's the, the list of anybody who's wondering. Category 1 storm, 74 to 95 miles an hour. Uh, category 2, 96 to 110. I can't think of a name Category 2 storm that we had. One, for all the trouble that one caused, was what? Category, category 1. A one. Yes. Now, Category 3, that's where Betsy is. Yes. 111 to 130. Right. Category 4 would put us, uh, I guess Andrew would be right in the middle range there. That's correct. And then we've only had, what, uh, two, I think, Category well, 5 storms we've, hit we've the continent. We've had several, US. but as far as the ones that have actually hit the U.S. that I'm aware of, I think two or three at most, John. Uh, but you know what? It's kind of quiet for the time being outside right now. Partly cloudy skies. Deceivingly so. Deceivingly so. Deceivingly so. Partly cloudy to mostly cloudy skies. With 79 at the airport. Temperature at the Audubon Zoo is 80. Slide L 74. The humidity 88 percent. Winds blowing from the northeast at only uh, 7 miles per hour. So things are tranquil right now. The pressure 30, 0, 8 and steady. And yes, the storm continues to go almost due west, but not quite. A little bit north of due west, but still not northwest, which is the direction it would take it into the middle Gulf Coast. But you can see very clearly its motion is well-defined. Highest winds still at 140 miles per hour, so it's a little bit larger storm. But it's slowly coming under the influence of these southerly steering winds in the western part and central part of the Gulf. While it was to the south of this ridge, of course, it was being influenced by the steering wi winds moving toward the west, but now it's coming under these steering winds, but these winds have lightened up just a little bit during the daytime and evening hours. So the question is, how far will it turn to the north, or will its westerly momentum take it to the south of us? The best estimate that we can come up with right now is that it'll eventually move more toward the northwest, toward the southeast or south central Louisiana coast and uh, I think also decrease in its forward speed. Right now running around 18 to 20 miles per hour and maybe later tomorrow uh, slowing up a bit as it moves more northwest at about 15 miles per hour. This is just an estimate. It's the best we can do and if that happens there's a possibility that it could be close to or maybe a little southwest of the mouth of the Mississippi River tomorrow, Tuesday evening, sometime during the evening hours. Now that could turn out to be a little on the fast side, but we would rather play it on the safe side so that evacuation can take place and you'll be out and safe. 
the latitude 26.3 north, longitude about 85.7 west. And again, there's the possibility, a strong possibility, that in the immediate coastal sections, especially south of the city and out in St. Bernard, that the tides by sunrise or shortly after could be three to five feet above normal or above mean sea level, which means the roadways would be cut off. And then as the storm approaches the coast, the storm surge, the tides will rise and rise rapidly as the eye is quite close to the coast. And if we were to take a direct hit here, we could be looking at 10 to 20 feet of storm surge. That's the vertical height of the water spreading inland over the region. And this could look something like this. For example, if it was moving in near or just to the west of Grand Isle, you could get a maximum of about 15 feet or so. If it was moving in a little bit to the west, you might get 20 feet here in parts of St. Bernard. Around the lake, you could get elevations that would vary anywhere from 6 to 13 feet. The Mississippi coast, a direct hit or just to the west of there, something in the 16 to 18 foot range. So if you prepare for this, this would be the worst possible. I think you'll be, be preparing on the safe side. Had a lot of calls from residents on the North Shore. Remember this up there. If you live on the North Shore, all you've got to do is move a few miles north, in some cases a few hundred miles to high land. So you don't have to go very far. It's primarily people south of the lake that are in the low-lying areas that have to go the longer distances to be at a safe elevation. Now here's your late-night forecast. A few widely scattered showers and thunderstorms.